We are here at Goonhilly Earth Station to launch the UK Space Agency's Satellite Challenge 2019. The UK Space Agency Satellite Challenge asks students aged 11 to 22 to come up with innovative ideas of how satellites can be used to benefit our economy, environment and our health. There is a large cash prize for winning entries, but even better than that, you actually have the opportunity to turn your ideas into reality by pitching in front of senior space representatives. Last year, Cornish students won two of the nine prizes. Richard Lander School won the overall competition with an idea of a surf safe band to keep surfers safe in the water. It was kind of the idea that you could track people essentially using low orbit satellites and um, radio wave emitters from a wrist and the smallness of the technology allowed it to be adaptable to use in say wetsuit implants or dog chips we decided earlier we could expand to using pets and tracking pets with it just to help people in the sea in case they get into dangerous areas. Roseland students came up with a novel idea to keep people safe while travelling by using data about where different health outbreaks may have occurred and then using an app to warn people about specific areas. Entries can be sent to the UK Space Agency in February in a number of ways. They could be in the form of a presentation, a video, a poster or an infographic or any sort of creative way that you think is the best idea to get your idea across. I will now pass you on to Dr. Kat Hickey, who's going to tell you more about how satellites are currently used. Hello, guys. My name is Kat Hickey, and I work at Goonhilly Earth Station. I'm here today to tell you a bit about how satellites work and how we use them. If you haven't got a pen and paper with you at the moment, now might be the time to pause the video and grab some so you can take some notes. The first question is, what is a satellite? A satellite can be any natural or artificial body that orbits around the Earth or any other planet. That actually leads to a second question. What is an orbit? An orbit is a path around an object in space, for example, in the shape of a circle. So that could be a circle around the Earth or around the Sun or around any other planet. Satellites collect data and then transmit them to the ground. And the way they do that is by sending the signals to what we call antennas or aerials. And we have a lot of those here at Goonhilly Earth Station. From here, the data is then processed and may be stored in a data center or sent to a university for further analysis. Satellites can also communicate with each other. So either signals can be sent from one antenna to the satellite and down to another antenna, and that way you've maybe bridged an ocean. But satellites can also go from an antenna to another satellite, to a second satellite, and then down to an antenna there. So there are several options in which satellites can communicate. Satellites can be in several different orbits, and I'm showing some examples in this slide here. The first one for you to remember is called LEO, or Low Earth Orbit. That is any orbit with distances of up to 2,000 kilometers away from the Earth. A lot of satellites that we know, for example, the International Space Station, is in a low Earth orbit. The next category up is called MEO, M-E-O, which stands for Medium Earth Orbit. Medium Earth Orbit is essentially anything between LEO and the next orbit up, which is called GEO. Now, can you guess what GEO stands for? This is actually a trick question. GEO does not stand for giant Earth orbit, but actually stands for geostationary orbit. In a geostationary orbit, if, they have, if you have the Earth at the center, and you imagine a satellite rotates around the Earth at exactly the same rate at which the Earth rotates around its own axis, that gives you a geostationary orbit. So from the perspective of a viewer on the Earth looking up to the satellite, that satellite appears to be always in the exact same position. Anything above a geostationary orbit is called HEO, or High Earth Orbit. And just for comparison, the Moon is another 10 times further away. Orbits can also be in different planes. One of them is the equatorial plane. So any satellites orbiting around the Earth, roughly where the Earth's equator is, are in an equatorial orbit. But then there are also satellites going across the poles, some of them at slight angles, and those are called polar orbits which orbit a satellite needs to go into, whether it's a polar orbit or an equatorial one, whether it's a low Earth orbit or high Earth orbit, depends on the purpose of the satellite and what it's there for to do. Some satellites are there for communications. So those are active systems that will send signals to another satellite or to an antenna on the ground. Those could be used for TV or radio broadcasting, for example, for mobile services, or also for satellite internet for places that don't have fiber. Satellites can also be used for navigation. Navigation was originally developed by the military, but now these systems are being used by anybody on their phones, for example. Navigation satellites are usually in a medium Earth orbit and usually work in constellations. So you might have something like 18 to 30 satellites 
per navigation system in this medium Earth orbit. So that at any point in time at your location, you have view of three or four different navigation satellites to accurately determine your position. For military use, these satellites use uh, millimeter accuracy usually, but that is a bit less accurate for civil navigation. In for satellite navigation, you need to have at least three or four satellites in view of where you currently are. The receiver on your phone will determine the distance between itself and each of the satellites, and by triangulation, which is the principle to determine one's position, can then exactly figure out where you are. If that application that you're using also has map information, that can then be overlaid, and that way you can see exactly on a map where your position might be at the time. There are several applications for these navigation satellites. One is very easy. If you're in your car and you need to figure out how to get to school or how to get another, to another place, you might want to use satellite navigation. But also for defense and security purposes, and maybe surprisingly, also for research purposes, for example, in Earth sciences. So in volcanology, GPS positioning or satellite navigation is used to determine the exact shape of a volcano and how that might be changing over time. Similarly, we can use this application for seismology, the study of earthquakes, to study landslides and land movement, and also to study plate tectonics. A third application for satellites is Earth observation. And I've put a quote here from Wikipedia about what Earth observation actually means. It's the gathering of information about the planet's physical, chemical, and biological systems via remote sensing technologies supplemented by surveying techniques, encompassing the collection, analysis, and presentation of data. So there's a lot there in that statement. Uh, you might be able to think of different examples for each of these different statements wrapped into this one. Earth observation satellites are typically in a low Earth orbit or in a geostationary orbit. When they're in a low Earth orbit, the advantage is that they're a lot closer to the Earth, so they can see at higher resolution. But at the same time, the area that they're covering with that camera view is a lot smaller. If you go further away, so into a geostationary orbit, the resolution that you're getting will not be as good. But at the same time, you can cover a much, much bigger area of the Earth. So again, depends on the purpose of your Earth observation satellite. There could be different types of sensors on an Earth observation satellite. So those might be actual cameras in the visual wavelengths. But those might also be radar sensors or other sensors that we're using. One example of a satellite suite that is specifically there for Earth observation is the ESA Sentinel suite, and a second one are the Landsat satellites from the American Space Agency, NASA. The Sentinel satellites is a suite of satellite with several different purposes. Some of them are there specifically to cover the different land areas on the Earth, some of them are there specifically to study the oceans, and some of them are there for the atmosphere. They're also at different altitudes above the surface of the Earth, and that way give different resolution depending on their purpose. Sentinel satellites are used for a variety of purposes, and in the next few slides I'm just showing you a few examples of what those could be used for. So what we see here is an example of wildfires in Greece, and we can really see the vast area that these wildfires are covering. The only way to see that in one go would really only be from a satellite. Here's another view of that same area, but in slightly different light wavelengths. And now we can really see the large, large area that was burnt in this particular wildfire in 2017. What we have here is a, a visual from satellites, from the Landsat satellites, of some algae blooms in Lake Erie. And we can see the beautiful patterns that those algae create. But we can also imagine that that might be really useful for studying, for example, transport processes from rivers into that lake. This is just a close-up of some of those patterns, and we can really see to start the small-scale, turbulent structures in there, and some of the processes and the fluid mechanics that are going on in that lake. What we have here is an image of Puerto Rico in early September 2017. And if we move on, we can see the same area, but after a big hurricane. So we can see that those satellites are really, really useful to study the impact of natural disasters and how civil populations are affected. In the next slide, we can see the Larsen Ice Shelf, and we can actually see that there's a really big crack going through. Now, this particular image became very famous because scientists used a series of these images to study how this crack in the ice shelf was propagating over time, and how eventually a big, big chunk of that ice shelf broke off and started floating away. 
Scientists use this to study the timescales in which global warming and climate change might be affecting the planet. One application of satellites, in particular Earth observation satellites, is interferometric synthetic aperture radar. And what I have here is an example, a schematic, that shows how that works. Essentially, the satellite will send a wave down to the ground to hit a surface and then be reflected from that surface. So there's a distance measurement that a satellite can do between itself and the ground. At a second pass of that satellite, at the same point, if the ground has slightly changed position, for example, if there's a volcano that's slightly inf inflating because of activity under the surface, that distance between the satellite and the point on the surface will have changed slightly. And that can be calculated with a wave wave processing principle called interferometry. So by using this principle, we can get up to millimeter accuracy on movements of the ground from space. What we have here is an example of one of those volcanoes. And the result of this analysis, the result is then called an interferogram. And the rainbow colored lines on here, those are called fringes, essentially stand for the amount of deformation of a particular point on the surface of that volcano between two different passes of the satellite. Another example of the same principle can be used in mining. So here's an example of a, a satellite image of a mine, and the colors in this image show different amounts of deformation at different points in time. So from left to the right, there were different changes in that surface, and we were able to observe that from satellites. We might want to think of applications that are not just satellites, but also use other types of data. So what we're showing here is just an example of where different types of data are essentially gathered in an informational dashboard that compiles information from satellites, but also from other sensors that might be useful for different types of applications. And last but not least, I want to finish with a satellite application that hopefully many of you will be familiar with, Pokemon Go. So this was an application where on your phone, through positioning, through the navigation satellites, you were able to interact with your environment and catch Pokemon and advance from level to level. So I hope with all of this, I've given you some ideas of how satellites can improve our lives, make them better, make them more fun, make them healthier, help with disaster recovery, and all sorts of other things. And I'm sure that you guys will have lots and lots of different ideas of how satellites can improve our lives.